recording. So hi everyone. Um, my name is Mary and I know I've seen a couple of you in the webinars previously. For those whose first time it is, um, I am the health educator here at Arthritis New South Wales. And today we're going to be um, talking about exercise and flexibility and stability. And I will be presenting along uh, side with my colleague, Bree, who's our health promotion officer here. So Bree, I'll get you to introduce yourself for a little bit. Sure. So I'm actually the health promotion coordinator um, for Arthritis Queensland. So um, you'll see me in a few different uh, webinars. I did one last week with Sean and I've, we'll do, I'll probably do like one once a month and a couple co-presenting with Mary. But it's so lovely to see you all and I can see a few um, similar faces and names from last week. So thanks so much for joining us today. Just a reminder to everyone um, who has just joined in then, and it's your first time here in our webinars, we uh, record these sessions to make sure everyone gets a, the opportunity to listen into some of the information we have to share with you. And um, the choice is entirely yours if you want to keep your camera on or switch it off. We just ask that all microphones are muted so we can um, minimize any kind of sounds coming through and disrupting the session. And I mentioned before, we'll have plenty of opportunity for questions. So we will hold off on those until the very end. And we'll leave you a lot of time to actually share some thoughts, feedback, um, have some open discussion with everyone. So let's get started. I will just remind everyone that these webinars are intended to share some general information and advice around self-management. So we do make sure um, we put in every effort to make sure they're evidence-based, um, they're accurate, reliable. And so the recommendations are supported by um, our guidelines here. But if you do have questions that relate back to your individual treatment or your um, individual condition, always make sure you're consulting with your doctor or your primary health care provider. In saying that, we do our best to answer any questions you might have in relation to the topic we cover today. So today we will be going through the benefits of flexibility and balance exercises. Um, last week, you would have covered strength and endurance. So hopefully you got a lot of information um, that was helpful from that session. This is going to be a little bit different to that session, but we will still be talking about benefits of exercise, but particularly in the context of flexibility and balance exercises. We'll show you some um, videos that provide you with guidance on proper exercise form and safety measures. Even though these exercises are relatively safe, you can do them in your household. Um, and we'll talk to you a little bit about how to um, do them and why they're really good for you. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of the flexibility and balance exercises you already do? Heard someone talking about um, ballet just before. I do uh, a bit that of was me. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, I do a little bit of yoga, which you know, I find really good. The balancing poses with yoga I found really helpful. Yoga is an incredible form of flexibility and balance exercise. And Brie will actually be covering that in a lot more detail shortly. It's a great form of exercise to implement in your day. I do yoga and qigong. I have a session of each each week and um, I have great intentions of continuing those exercises every other day, but um, something like gets in the way and it doesn't often happen. Yeah, and do you find that helps with some of your um, arthritis symptoms, like the stiffness, the tightness in um, some of your It certainly joints? helps with stiffness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my I don't know how far to push the flexibility because I've been doing yoga for close on 50 years and I can see how my flexibility has diminished with, as the arthritis takes hold. And I, I just don't know how far to push my arthritic hip to try to maintain some flexibility. So that's why I'm here. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about that a little bit more. 
So let's, um, why don't we start with just a general definition of what is flexibility and balance exercises? So we'll start with um, flexibility exercises and they're also known as stretching exercises. So these are the activities that are really intended to improve that range of motion around your joints and your muscles. So they're intended to target muscles, tendons, and many, many other connective tissues we have in the body. And so they're intended to kind of help those muscles stretch, lengthen, contract without limitations, which is what's going to allow for very smooth, very efficient, pain-free movement. So when we do get older, um, you said just before that you've noticed your flexibility has diminished. That's just a natural part of the aging process where flexibility, it does decline. But by actually continuing to do those stretching exercises, everyone's going to have different limits and thresholds around how far they can go. But you can certainly work on improving that flexibility and maintaining that. So these type of exercises are used a lot in the rehabilitation context. Um, so where there's injury or disease, and we're talking arthritis here, um, this has resulted in a re restricted range of motion, which applies to specific joints. So when we do flexibility exercises, really the goal is to actually regain that normal range of motion and improve those functional abilities. Balance exercises are a little bit different, but they're very much, um, you know, have the same kind of benefits. But in the context of falls prevention here, impaired balance is one of those major risk factors that seem to afflict a lot of people living with arthritis. So this is where balance exercises are super important. And it doesn't matter what type of arthritis you have, it's a risk factor that can be um, mitigated with balanced training. So this is um, exercise that intends to improve postural control. So these exercises really help ensure that um, the body's center of gravity remains positioned within an area defined by the base of support. So in the human body, our skeleton structure, um, the center of gravity typically lies around the pelvis or the lower abdomen. Abdomen. So for a standing person, the base of support is usually defined by that area covered by their feet. So if someone is standing or they're moving around, it's really important to keep their center of gravity within the base of support to actually maintain that balance and prevent falls it's when that center of gravity actually moves outside the base of support, this is when stability becomes compromised. And so this is when we start to see someone um, experience more falls and injuries. So um, we usually implement these to prevent falls, prevent injury, improve posture, build strength, and increase that fall-related self-efficacy. And I'm gonna talk about what that is shortly. So there are a lot of different benefits of flexibility exercises. And one of the main benefits in the context of arthritis is that enhanced joint mobilization and improved range of motion. And this is because these type of exercises really help something called synovial fluid production within the joints. Now, if you were in my first webinar, the introduction to exercise and why it's good for us, I went through the different structures in our joints and I would have spoken about something called synovial fluid. Now, synovial fluid contains a substance called lubricin. It's one of the most slipperiest substances known to humankind. It's intended to actually act as a lubricant and reduce friction between joint surfaces every time we're moving. So when we have flexion and extension, which is what we do with our flexibility exercise, it can actually help with getting that fluid moving in and out of the cells in your joint tissues, which help deliver essential nutrients and keep those tissues nourished. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I guess in arthritis, what happens 
is that production and the quality of synovial fluid can become really compromised. So when that fluid is compromised, it can lead to things like your joint stiffness. It can lead to that reduced mobility and reduced function. But this is where flexibility exercises come into it because it's going to help stimulate that fluid, um, get that fluid moving in and out of your tissue, and it's going to improve that joint lubrication and allow for smoother joint movement. Other benefits can really help include helping with pre preventing injuries, falls, and reducing muscle fatigue. So again, in the context of arthritis, the effects of muscle inflammation flexibility on joint stability and injury risk can be really significant. So we have muscles that surround our joints and they play such an important role in actually giving us stability and support. They're there to actually help protect the joints from shock, force and injury. And over time, they can become tighter and they can become inflexible. And so when that happens, it really compromises our ability of the muscles to actually support and stabilize the affected joints. Not only that, it can actually pull the affected joint out of its ideal alignment. So they become less effective at absorbing shock. And this just increases that stress we're seeing in the joints and it can lead to risk of injury. Uh, those muscles can tire more quickly because they're having to work harder. Um, for limited flexibility. And so sometimes in these instances, when those muscles um, tighten, they fatigue, they can actually um, lead individuals to develop um, compensatory movement patterns to complete tasks or activities. So this is basically when you, um, it leads to inefficient movement in your mechanics and this is what's going to increase the stress in certain joints. So just an example of this is asymmetric weight shifting. So imagine just leaning on one leg um, more than the other while you're standing or, mo or moving. And that's what can happen um, when we develop those compensatory movement patterns. And you end up putting way too much weight. Um, you're pretty much avoiding putting too much weight on the painful one and you're putting it on the other, um, let's say knee or the hip if you're experiencing pain on one side. So pretty much it's an alternative movement strategy um, meant to compensate for pain, weakness or limitations. But over time, this is when it can start to have negative effects. It can lead to things like muscle imbalances and alter the alignment of our joints, which can um, make things worse in the long run. So this is what flexibility training is really designed to do. It's help. It's there to help uh, restore proper muscle length tension relationships. It helps improve the elasticity of the muscles, helps prevent them from fatiguing easily, um, and reduces that need for compensatory movements, which can also lead to reduced muscle soreness and reduced pain. Much like the benefits of flexibility exercises, the benefits of your balance exercises are pretty much endless. So you can see we've got a long list here. So balance exercises often engage multiple muscle groups. So it's usually the muscle groups that are involved in maintaining good posture. So these exercises are intended to strengthen muscles around the core, the back, the hips, and the legs, all which are important for maintaining proper posture. As these muscles become stronger and more active, they can better support our body. They can better support the spine and the joints, especially your arthritic joints. So they do lead to improved posture and reduce risk um, of falls. They help promote proper alignment of the joints as well. And so many balance exercises you will see involve weight-bearing activities which can help build that strength in the muscles as well. They can also help with building strength in bones. And so by challenging that balance, by engaging both large muscle groups and smaller stabilizer muscles, this is what can lead to overall improvements in things like strength. And um, this is gonna help with improving things like pain and improving function. 
So balance exercises really intend to challenge the brain as well. And so it can help with maintaining equilibrium in the body. It can help improve proprioception, which is basically that awareness of your body position in space. So um, this is basically what's going to help improve coordination as well. But it can only be achieved by practicing balance exercises quite regularly, which is where you can train the muscles involved in maintaining stability. So not only do they become quicker and more efficient to actually react to changes in your position and um, help that support, it can reduce the risk of things like slips, trips, falls, and that's what we call for related self-efficacy. So this is basically your confidence in your ability to prevent those falls and fractures and manage those balance-related challenges. So by regularly incorporating these balance exercises into our exercise regime, it can help improve confidence, self-assurance. Um, we can become more proficient in performing balance exercises and help you just feel better about navigating daily activities very safely. So um, just a final kind of benefit to add on to everything. There's been a lot of research looking into the benefits of balance exercise, and they've actually found it can help with increasing walking speed. So um, if you're a regular walker, you like hiking, this is where balance exercises can have a lot of benefits as well. Hey, so last week, um, Sean and Bree introduced you to Meet the Opposition, if you remember that. They basically highlighted why we need to be dial up, dialing up strength and endurance training. Um, and so they mentioned uh, sarcopenia, osteopenia, and inflexibility. And so what I want to do here is just refresh some of our memory. Um, and for those who didn't get any background um, on last week's webinar. I'll just um, introduce you to some of these things that we intend to um, reduce the risk of. So sarcopenia, it's really a term used to describe gradual loss of muscle mass and strength that occurs naturally in aging. So your muscles are very strong, sturdy support system for your body. They help you move, lift things, stay active. But as you get older, we do start to see a decline in our muscle mass and our muscles can begin to weaken and they can shrink. So when we lose this muscle mass, it can make everyday tasks a lot more difficult, like getting up from a chair or maybe carrying groceries. It can also increase that risk of falls and injuries. And so sarcopenia isn't just about looking less muscular. It's actually more about that functional decline in the muscles, which is what we are more worried about when it comes to overall health, well-being, even independence. So causes of sarcopenia are very multifactorial. They involve genetics, um, disease itself, like diabetes, high cholesterol, inflammation, insulin resistance, these are things that are linked back to sarcopenia, but it does begin in our 40s or 50s and our muscle mass decreases annually. So muscle loss is really exacerbated by things like not using your muscles, immobility, and it can increase the risk of hospitalization. So all of these things which are going to hasten the effects of sarcopenia as well. By bringing in those flexibility exercises, um, such as stretching and you mentioned you do yoga, all these things can really help with uh, reducing the effects of sarcopenia by keeping those muscles and joints very supple and very mobile. Osteopenia, might have heard of it, might have it yourself, but it's a condition where the bones become weaker than normal. It's almost like they're softening. As we get older, our bones naturally lose some of their density but osteopenia, it kind of accelerates this process, which puts you at that high risk of falls and fractures. And so this is why flexibility and balance are really important. It's important for improving that coordination to reduce that likelihood of falls and fractures, especially if you have osteopenia. 
inflexibility um, is what you might know as the stiffness you experience in the mornings or the afternoons, tightness, limited mobility. This is what can make your everyday activities really hard. Um, loss of collagen is actually a significant factor here. Um, and it can occur again as a result of that natural aging process. So for those who don't know what collagen is, it is one of those proteins that is a major structural component in a lot of different connective tissues um, throughout the body. And this includes those tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. So all these tissues play super important roles in supporting and stabilizing our joints and facilitating that smooth movement. But, um, you know, flexibility and balance exercises, they don't, we don't have the evidence that they directly increase collagen production nor do they increase that elasticity, but it's the mechanical stress, the good type of stress we get from flexibility exercises that are said to have that beneficial role in helping that production of the matrix protein. So helping those con connective tissues, those tendons, um, ligaments and cartilage get healthier. And so it has a very important role in strengthening those structures and then we've got a um, another benefit, I guess, but proprioception, that's something I mentioned just earlier. It's your body's ability to sense its position, movements, and the forces acting upon it without relying on your sight. So imagine it being like your body's sixth sense um, when it comes to moving and balancing. So this is what allows us to walk, run, do all the things we do in our day without having to consciously think about every little movement. When this becomes reduced, and this could happen due to changes in our eyesight, we know our eyesight changes a lot when we get older. Um, certain medications we take could be blood pressure changes. It could even be sensory or neurological changes. You could find yourself stumbling a little bit more and reduce proprioception. So this is when you feel a little bit unsteady on your feet or you're starting to find yourself um, having a bit of trouble judging those distances, um, this is where we have a lot of good news. So your flexibility balance exercises are intended to really help um, not just your cognitive abilities but your motor abilities um, and help strengthen your proprioceptive abilities. So to enhance your flexibility, a few things can really help. Um, starting with your stretching exercises, how they usually work is by stretching that muscle length. So sometimes when we're not using our muscles enough, those muscle fibers can shorten or in arthritis, they just become a little bit more tighter and more inflexible. So this can make them feel a bit shorter. And this is why stretching um, techniques can be really important because they're going to help with increasing that um, stretch tolerance shortly. And I'm going to show you a few easy stretching exercises you can do in your household at any time of the day. Joint mobilization is a little bit different. It's a manual therapy technique. So this is intended to help improve joint mobility, relieve stiffness, increase range of motion, and it involves applying a more targeted force to a very painful, stiff, or a compromised joint. And so this might be the joint that's affected by arthritis, but this type of um, technique has a very positive impact on um, any kind of pain level associated with musculoskeletal conditions. My a fascial release or soft tissue release tissue um, techniques are intended to help improve flexibility by just releasing that tension. So it's kind of in the name itself. Um, it's meant to help with enhancing tissue mobility and also increase range of motion. So it's um, it kind of a way of, it has to be done under supervision and by a professional, but they target trigger points or knots in um, the fascia facial tissues um, through gentle pressure, myofacial release therapy, and um, it's intended to help restore that optimal soft tissue uh, length. 
And then finally, strength training, a really important part of flexibility. Again, we're going back and talking about the benefits of increasing muscle length and how important it is um, for correcting muscle imbalances, um, posture. It helps lead to improved body mechanics. So when we have better alignment in the body, it's going to help our joints function better. It's going to allow us to move um, more smoother and without any pain. So all of these things are going to be best implemented and achieved through working closely with a physio or an exercise physiologist. They're your professionals who are equipped with all the knowledge um, and skill to make sure you're doing them safely. So we've got three types of flexibility exercises here that I want to show you. We have range of motion exercises, stretching, and then I'm going to hand over to Bree to talk a little bit about yoga and Tai Chi. So I'm just going to share these videos with you and feel free to follow along, um, follow the demonstration because it's really good to have a practice at moving some of these joints. They're very safe to um, practice in your own space. An exercise that is designed to get the shoulder muscles activated involves taking your fingertips, putting them on the shoulders, and then attempting to rotate your elbows forward. It should be formed in about a one to two second duration of the circle, and you want to complete about 15 repetitions forward, and then 15 repetitions backwards. If 15 sounds like a lot, you can always just start with five or start with 10 to make sure you're getting the hang of doing that exercise, but it's just gently rotating your shoulders forward and backwards in a circular motion. The next exercise we have are knee extensions. Seated knee flexion and extension. In this example, the operative leg is the patient's right leg. Sitting upright with your thigh supported in a chair, bend your operative knee as far back as possible and hold for 10 seconds. Fully straighten your operative knee as far as possible and hold for 5 to 10 seconds, then relax. In general, this exercise will help to strengthen your knee and thigh muscles and it will help you regain range of motion in your knee. By your two-week follow-up appointment, you should be able to fully straighten your leg and bend it at least 90 degrees. Work up to five reps, two to three times per day. Do this exercise with each leg. Don't hold your breath while doing this exercise. So again, that's just sitting in a chair, extending your leg straight out in front of you, um, extending it to the point that you can. If um, you recognize you need to challenge how far you're going, that's always going to be um, best discussed with a exercise professional. But it's just flexing your foot upwards towards the ceiling, holding for a few seconds, and then returning it back to that starting position. So it's great if you have um, osteoarthritis in your knee. Even if um, you're having a flare with rheumatoid arthritis, it could still be good to actually get those joints moving without placing any stress on them. Hi, I'm Laura McCarthy of LB Hand Therapy and we're here today to talk about wrist range of motion. Wrist range of motion is often done when you first come out of your cast after a wrist fracture. If you're coming out of your cast because you've had a tendon or muscle repair, please check with your physician before you start these exercises. Oftentimes, when you get your cast off from breaking your wrist, the doctor will say, begin general range of motion exercises of your wrist. He usually gives you a wrist splint to wear the rest of the time. You remove the wrist splint and you start with 10 repetitions of bending your wrist forward. This is wrist flexion. And you go from bending it to neutral. You should go slowly. Now, although they're talking about um, this being the exercise to do after breaking your wrist and removing the cast, it can still be applied in the context of arthritis, if you, especially if you suffer with it in your wrist joints, just extending one arm in front of you, having a palm facing down, and then just gently pressing down on the fingers to stretch that wrist. Getting that movement happening in your wrist can be really great if you struggle with stiffness. An exercise that is designed to get the shoulder muscles activated. Here we go. So then we have some stretching exercises. So we have some calf stretches here. 
He's just holding on to the back of the chair and he's stretching one leg out and um, just getting a good stretch going through those calf muscles. With your quadriceps stretch. Sitting on the floor, sofa or bed with your legs outstretched, place a rolled up towel under one knee. Push down on the towel as if straightening your knee. Then pull your toes and foot towards you so that you feel your calf muscle stretch and so that your heel lifts off the floor or sofa or bed. Hold for five seconds, relax for five seconds, then repeat until you've done 10 contractions. Repeat the exercise with the other leg. So you can see how easy that would be to do if you're lying in bed, um, maybe just before you go to sleep. And you might find that beneficial if you're someone who wakes up with a lot of morning stiffness as well. Just getting a stretch in before you go to sleep um, could really help with alleviate some of that stiffness. Um, or while you're watching telly, watching Married at First Sight, you could always just, um, you know, Get a towel, get your partner to help you place it under there and just stretch um, those quadriceps out. Now we've got neck stretches here. But I have to fast forward it a little bit. Hi everyone, my name's Jay, I'm a physiotherapist and I work with people with arthritis and joint pain. Hi, my name's James, I've been living with, I just need a try. with arthritis Get that. for seven years and I like to use exercise as a way to alleviate pain and keep my joints active. So today we're going to go through a series of exercises focused on improving our mobility and strength of the neck muscles and back muscles. We're going to be standing or sitting for some of these exercises, but we'll also be laying down for some of them. James has got a sofa to work from, I've got a yoga mat, but you can always use your bed at home as well. Make sure you've got good space and enough room for you to get up and down safely when doing these exercises. Now remember when we're doing these exercises, go at your own level and your own pace. Everyone's different. So if you've got any questions, speak to your healthcare professional. So, should we get started James? Let's do it. So the first exercise we're going to do today is going to be the head tilt. You can stand up like I am or you can be sat down like James is. Before we get going, we need to set our posture. So I want you to stand or sit nice and tall through your neck, chest proud, shoulders relaxed behind your back. From this position, all we're going to do is we're going to take one ear to the shoulder, hold there for five seconds before we come back to centre and then repeat on the opposite side. So. Should we give it a go, James? Let's do it. Right, let's go three each side for five second holds. So let's. So you can see they're stretching the neck um, left and right, but they're also going to be holding them for a couple of seconds as well. So these um, type of exercises can be really good as well to do before you get into your strength training class or um, a dance moves. It's good for actually mobilizing some of uh, those joints. So I'll just move on to the next. So Bree, I believe I'm handing over to you now and I'll let you yeah. take over to discuss yoga. Bear with me while I share my screen. All right, can we see that? All good, Mary? Yep. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay, so... Hi, everyone. Thanks for that, Mary. Um, they were good exercises. I was going to say, I don't think we can skip when the, the video is a little mini no. ones. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a chat about yoga first. So the practice of yoga involves physical postures, breath regulation, concentration and meditation. So these aspects benefit both your mind and your body. 
So yoga can also increase your physical activity levels and flexibility. So it involves a range of poses that target different muscle groups, joints and body stems. Through regular practice, these poses help improve flexibility, um, strength and your range of motion, which can be really, really beneficial for people with arthritis. So the gentle stretching and movements can help lubricate your joints. It can help reduce stiffness and increase flexibility. So it can really make it easier to perform daily tasks. So yoga can also improve your muscle strength. So as the poses require um, quite an engagement from different muscle groups to help support and stabilize your body, and as you hold these poses and move in between them, they can really help strengthen those muscles um, and especially those ones that surround your affected joints. So strengthening these muscles can help improve your joint stability, reduce pain and prevent injury. So these will eventually improve um, your mobility and your function. So there is a mind-body connection with yoga. Um, so mindfulness practices, practices such as uh, focused breathing and meditation, they help people develop a greater sense self-awareness. They can help reduce stress and manage pain perception. So certain yoga poses involve um, that gentle traction, which can really help decompress your joints. And that may provide relief from arthritis-related arthritis discomfort. So there are certain poses such as, you know, the downward facing dog or the child's pose or that cat cow stretch. These help really lengthen the spine, open up the joints and reduce pressure. And we all know that uh, yoga is a great, um, it can help reduce stress. So chronic stress is known to worsen symptoms of arthritis and contribute to inflammation and pain. So yoga offers a really great range of um, relaxation techniques, you know, that deep breathing, guided imagery and progressive muscle relaxation. So these all promote the activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's our body's um, natural relaxation response. And by inducing this state of relaxation and reducing the stress hormones like, like cortisol, um, yoga can really help reduce tension, improve your sleep quality and improve overall well-being. So we're going to have a um, discussion about the research behind um, yoga for rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. So for rheumatoid arthritis, there was a study that looked at 66 patients with rheumatoid um, and then they were randomized into two groups. So you had a yoga group and a non-yoga group. And this was done over an eight-week period. So the study found those with um, rheumatoid arthritis who were in the yoga group and completed five sessions a week for eight weeks had lowered disease activity, it stabilized inflammation-related biomarkers. So this means it helped reduce inflammation levels within the body and it helped maintain immune balance in RA patients. So this means it helped calm the body's immune system by functioning normally and not being um, overactive or underactive. But it's really important to note that in this study, um, those were who were in the yoga group also had counseling sessions on yoga, um, stress management, nutrition, and personal lifestyle management. So that's probably why there was such a huge benefit seen in the yoga group um, because it was kind of like a holistic, um, a holistic view of like in enhancing everyone's well-being. So for osteoarthritis and yoga, there was a study that looked at 13 different clinical trials, so a lot, and it had um, more than 1,500 people in these studies with knee osteoarthritis. So they actually looked at the effectiveness of yoga on pain, uh, function and psychosocial and life quality outcomes. So that study found that regular yoga practice 
reduce knee, I mean, reduce pain associated with knee arthritis um, symptoms, as well as improving their joint function and quality of life. It also helps promote physical function and enhanced general well-being um, with people that had osteoarthritis. So another important note is that it's really recommended that people with arthritis, you should be taught by an instructor who knows um, and understands your limitations with every um, pose and stretch and exercise. So postures should be um, modified to suit your needs and your abilities as well as props to be utilized to help your balance during these poses. So it's really important if you're gonna do yoga, do it with a professional who can really help guide you through everything correctly. All right, so now we're gonna have a chat about Tai Chi. So this is an ancient Chinese um, martial art form and it's practiced all around the world as a type of a gentle exercise. So it involves smooth flowing movements to help improve the flow of life energy or chi um, throughout your body. This is said to help create a sense of relaxation and improve or maintain health. It involves meditation, deep breathing and low impact movements that contribute to symptom reduction and improve overall well-being for people with arthritis. So research found that Tai Chi can be really beneficial for multiple types of arthritis. One study saw a reduction in disease activity for um, people with ankylosing spondylitis, as well as improved spinal mobility and quality of life with people with AS. And then there was another study that looked at um, older women with osteoarthritis, and they did a 12-week, um, sorry, 12, week, 12 weeks of Tai Chi and they've had increased joint flexibility, improved arthritis symptoms, improved um, balance and physical functioning. Um, I think, Mary, do you mind putting Julie on mute for um, me, please? So um, Pilates now. So Pilates aims to strengthen the body overall and can be really beneficial for back pain relief and improving general fitness and well-being. So these low impact activities focus on building strength, balance and flexibility, making them um, accessible to people of all ages and abilities. So Pilates involves a form of low impact exercise that focuses on strengthening the, bud, um, the body and particularly our core muscles, and it helps improve overall fitness and well-being. So it really incorporates movements that are smooth and controlled and impact-free. So Pilates involves completing um, really gentle, low-impact exercises, which improves your flexibility. So the controlled mo movements and focus on proper alignment improve um, joint pain, and reduce the risk of causing injury. So these exercises focus on that elongating and strengthening your muscles and regular practice can really help increase flexibility in those muscles and joints as well. And this is obviously really, really essential for maintaining range of motion and help reduce stiffness that can be associated with arthritis. And Pilates also um, strengthens core muscles and improves balance and coordination. So a strong core is really, really crucial for stability and balance. And this is really especially for people with arthritis who may um, experience joint instability or might be um, not that confident with um, balance and coordination. So Pilates exercises target your core muscles, including your abs, um, your back and your pelvis, and these all improve your core strength and stability. So many Pilates exercises involve movements that challenge balance and coordination. So you've got that um, standing on one leg or you perform exercises on unstable surfaces. So I know... Um, Matt Pilates, they use those little foam pads um, as well. 
So these exercises help improve the proprioception, which is our body's um, awareness of its position in space. And Mary talked about it before. And this um, improving the body's propri proprioception really helps um, maintain balance and preventing falls. So a study conducted on females with knee osteoarthritis showed that regular Pilates sessions led to significant improvements for pain, um, increased range of knee motion and improved physical function and enhanced balance. And another study looked at people with rheumatoid arthritis who completed regular Pilates classes for eight weeks. And they actually had really big improvements at reducing the levels of fatigue and depression and increasing their aerobic capacity and quality of life. So regular practice of Pilates can help reduce arthritis related pain by strengthening muscles around the affected joints, um, improving flexibility and promoting better alignment and posture. And additionally, the focus on controlled movements and proper breathing techniques can help reduce stress and tension in the body, which can further ease discomfort. And I actually just came from um, a Pilates session this morning. I always go every Thursday to reform a Pilates, which is, as you can see in this picture, it's on like a machine type thing like this with, um, uh, I guess, what are, what are they called? Band strings. Um, but I'm actually the youngest in the class and there's a lady in there. She's in her 70s and she goes three or four times a week and she is so strong. Her flexibility is amazing and it's all because of how great Pilates has been for her. So it's definitely worth something to look into if you're interested because it has such a significant it's made such a significant difference in me making my core strong, making everything else really, really strong as well. And plus it helps with my balance because I've got really bad balance and coordination. All right. So now we're going to talk about enhancing balance. So this involves various techniques and exercises and they include static and dynamic stability postures. So what is the difference between static versus dynamic stability postures? So static stability postures, these involve maintaining balance while you are stationary. So it could be standing on one leg or you could be doing a yoga pose like this, the tree pose, which is right here. So you're standing on the one leg, you're stationary, you're not moving and you've got that leg, um, the foot up inside in, in a thigh. So static postures help improve that proprioception and strengthen, strengthen your stability, stabilizing muscles, sorry. Then the next one, um, dynamic stability postures. So these require maintaining balance while you're actually moving. So you think walking, that's a dynamic stability posture. Um, also, if you're doing lunges um, as well, and a dynamic yoga sequences. So dynamic postures challenge the balance by introduces, introducing changes in weight distribution and movement padding, patterns while improving dynamic stability and coordination. So for changes in the base of support. So there are exercises that involve narrowing or widening the base of support challenged by altering the stability of the stance. So for example, when you're standing with your feet um, close together, that's a narrow base and that requires a lot more balance than if you stood with your feet um, hip width apart, so a wider base. So if you progressively narrow that base of support, it increases the difficulty of the exercise. And with um, variations in the height of the center of gravity. So by lowering or raising your center of gravity during exercises can really challenge your balance um, by changing your body's alignment and leverage. So for example, when you perform a squat or you're doing a lunge, um, that actually lowers your center of gravity. And then if you go and you stand up on your tippy toes, that will raise your cent center of gravity. 
And these variations engage all different types of muscle groups and can improve your overall stability. And then if you stand on different standing surfaces, so if you perform um, balance exercises on an unstable surface such as a foam pad like they use in Pilates or if you um, use a balance board or if you stand on uneven ground such as um, grass or sand or if you sit on a um, exercise ball. So all of these um, increase your proprioception um, input and it challenges the balance control. So the unstable surface requires greater activation um, from your stabilizing muscles and improves your neuromuscular coordination as well. And then as you get better in basic balance exercises, you can actually progress to more complex exercises involving a dual and multitask activity. So what I mean by this is um, you combining balance um, activities that use balance um, challenges with cognitive tasks, such as, so you could be balancing um, and you could be counting backwards, or you could be performing a memory exercise while you're still trying to maintain balance. So this dual task training um, improves cognitive function and enhances the integration of um, motor or cognitive skills, which is really essential for that real world balance task. Okay, so now we're gonna go into uh, the three different types of balance exercises. So we'll start off by looking at some static balance exercises, and then we'll move on to the dynamic ones, and then we'll finish off with the proprioception ones. So we're gonna go into some examples. So. I'll um, show the little video first and then I can go into a quick, um, I'll talk about it quickly. So, oh, I've got a, first off, I've got a share sound, which it's on. All right, so single leg stance. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. For single leg balance, stand next to something sturdy just in case you need a little assistance. Stand on one foot and then just balance. If you can go down to one finger, do that. And then if you can go not holding on at all. So the static exercise. Um, so a single leg stance is a static exercise. So as the lady had, make sure you have a chair beside you. Um, so you can hold on to for ba balance if you start to feel unstable. So stand tall with your fit, feet hip width apart then slowly lift one foot off the ground and bending the knee slightly and balance on the other leg while keeping that core engaged and your shoulders relax. So hold this position for as long as you can and then um, aiming for full stability and control and then switch to the other leg. So um, she had, she was holding onto the chair first and then as she got more comfortable, she used one finger and then she did none. So feel free to start off holding the chair and then progress, progressively get harder by finger and then not holding on at all. All right, so next one is a tandem stance. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. For a tandem stance, make sure you have a chair or something sturdy next to you just in case you need it for balance. Then place one foot directly in front of the other and just balance. So the tandem stance, as, as she, she said and did, um, have that chair beside you. Stand with one foot directly in front of the other, so your heel touching your toe. Keep your arms relaxed by your sides or holding onto that chair and just stay straight, straight ahead. So focus on maintaining your balance for as long as you can comfortably, then switch the position of your feet, placing the other foot in front. All right, so the balance ball or balance board or stability ball. So as this video here, she's on the exercise stability ball. This exercise is a great way to challenge your balance and core stability by maintaining control while sitting on an unstable surface and raising your opposite arms and legs. This is also a helpful exercise to those who have difficulty sitting on hard surfaces due to pain. To challenge yourself, Hold on to weights for additional resistance. 
All right, so this one will be a little bit harder than the other two exercises. Um, so as she was, start by sitting tall with your feet flat on the ground, sitting on the ball. Um, engage your core muscles. And then to begin with, you can just sit there and slowly lift one arm and then the other. And you can set, extend them out to the sides as well or overhead. And if you want to have a little bit more of a challenge, you can do both at once. And then for an extra challenge, which she was doing, you can lift one leg off the ground and then lift your opposite arm um, in the air and do it both sides. I only would do this if you can. Otherwise, just start off by lifting one arm at a time or one leg at a time. Um, and then you can progressively go to the more challenging um, positions as you feel a bit more comfort comfortable. Um, it's with the ball, focus on um, keeping your body centered, um, engage that core because that's your stabilizing muscles and um, like make sure you feel nice and balanced through those movements. And it's always good to have someone there just to watch you just in case. All right. All right, now we're gonna go into the dynamic exercises. Oops. So walking Begin heel to toe. standing with one foot in front of the other. Step two, step forward placing one foot in line with the other. Continue to step, placing right foot in front of left. Breathe normally, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. So this one's dynamic means that it's going to be in motion. So it's like the um, tandem stance, but you're actually walking. So. Take a step forward, placing the heel of one foot directly in front of the other toe and keep going. Um, so you can perform this exercise for 10 to 20 steps and then turn around. And uh, the next one is the side leg lift. So this video, he is going a little quick as well. Um, all right. So as you can see, he's standing tall, feet are hip width apart. And he is lifting one leg out to the side, keeping it straight and parallel to the ground. Um, but for this one, it's really good if you lift it up and you hold for a moment before you lower it back down. So he was going a bit quick like that. So lift the leg up, keep it um, straight and parallel and hold for a, a couple of seconds and then lower it back down and repeat on the other side. Um, this one only go where it feels comfortable and where you don't feel pain. Cause this one, a lot of people with like hip, um, osteoarthritis are going to be feeling quite restricted with that, um, movement and that motion. So just go for as long as comfortable and also please hold onto a chair or a tabletop, just a sturdy tabletop, um, just until you feel comfortable to not hold on to anything. So aim for about 10 to 15 reps per leg. All right, the last one for the dynamic exercise is the clock reach. Step one, begin by holding on to a chair with your left hand. Visualize a clock with 12 in front and six behind you. Step two, stand on your left leg and bring your right arm to 12 o'clock. Then reach to three and then six o'clock. Breathe normally while exercising, in through the nose and out through the mouth. So as this lady was doing, you're standing on one leg, holding onto a chair. Um, so the other leg is lifting up and then you reach your arms out. So the same with the leg lifts, only pull your arm back as far as it's comfortable, especially if you've got arthritis in the shoulder. Um, and the more you do these exercises, the more you're probably going to get that bit more uh, range of motion each time you do it. So it's all about practicing and um, repetition. All right, now we're going to go to dynamic exercises. Oh, I mean, sorry, proprioception exercises. 
All right. So this, um, remember, this is our body's awareness of its position in space. And doing these types of exercises can really, really improve your balance and coordination. All right. So we're going to go to the single leg stance with your eyes closed. Stand on one leg with your eyes closed. Try to keep your balance. Be very careful and hold on to a wall for support when you first start this exercise. A single leg balance exercise with your eyes closed is an enormously valuable and quite difficult exercise and should not be thought of lightly. It has many benefits including strengthening the muscles and ligaments around the ankles and knees, improving balance and coordination. Um, love his accent. <laughs> So, yes, the single leg stance with eyes closed, as he had mentioned, it's really important to only do this if you feel comfortable to and to also hold on to a support chair, wall, whatever's comfortable. But um, it's really important to make sure you've got something there that you can hold on to. So these are all a little bit more difficult, especially if you um, do struggle with balance and coordination. But the single leg stance, standing on the one leg, maintaining balance and stability, closing your eyes if you're comfortable and then holding onto that stable surface. Um, and then you hold that position for 10 to 30 seconds and then switch legs. All right, so now the foam pad exercise. Begin in a standing upright position on a foam surface or pillow with your arms resting at your sides. Raise both arms and lift one foot off the surface by bending your knee. Transfer your weight to your other leg. Hold this position. Make sure to keep your back straight during the exercise. Do not lose your balance and do not let your legs touch while you are balancing. All right, so as this lady was, she was standing on a foam pad, but you can also use a pillow as well. So stand with your feet hip width apart, arms out to the side. And then if you are comfortable enough, um, lift one leg up and have that stability um, support there for you, a wall or a chair. So focus on keeping your weight um, e evenly distributed and your core muscles engaged, and that will help with um, stabilizing your body. For an extra challenge, and if you feel up to it, you can close your eyes or perform gentle movements. And it might just be like arms up and down or out the front while maintaining that balance on that unstable surface. And the last one is our shoulder proprioception exercise. Place a ball on the wall in front of you. Before you begin, squeeze your shoulder blades downwards. Maintain this position as you bounce the ball on the wall. Take your arm out into different directions so that you work in different ranges of motion at the shoulder. This exercise will improve the proprioception at your shoulder joint. Proprioception refers to the mechanism by which your joints recognize their position in space. This is made possible by the feedback provided to the brain by stretch and pressure receptors in the joint. <laughs> A lack of this input All right, so as um, this lady was doing, she had a ball up against the wall, she was squeezing her shoulder blades and you maintain that position and then you start bouncing the ball on the wall and then you take your arms out to different directions and you work in that different range of motion at that shoulder. So this is really great exercise for those who have under, um, are undergoing shoulder rehab or if you've got arthritis in your shoulder, it's just a great one to keep that joint healthy and improve that proprioception at that shoulder joint. So um, there are actually a lot of different exercises you can do in Tai Chi or yoga that and Pilates, like I did this morning, that really um, works on your balance and improving your proprioception as well. And it's really good to have that instructor there while you do these certain exercises. All right, so starting out with exercise, it's really important to have a chat to an exercise professional. So the exercises should be um, prescribed to you by your physiotherapist or exercise physiologist. 
and you can get subsidised visits to a physio or exercise physiologist by getting a chronic disease management plan done um, at your with your doctor. So this will give you five subsidised visits a year. Um, and so you can definitely see a physio or exercise phys with those, those five visits. Um, I'll also go into detail about our online exercise programs that's for people with arthritis. Um, so when you are uh, prescribed exercises, they're usually prescribed in sets of three and four and um, reps of 15, 10 to 15 per exercise. So although we encourage you to explore other strategies for pain management, occasionally um, medication will have its place and when you absolutely need it as well. So as you know, there's no um, currently no effective disease modifying treatments available to slow or reverse the progression of osteoarthritis, but there are some available for many um, forms of inflammatory arthritis and this is a major point of difference in the treatment of osteoarthritis and inflammatory arthritis. For example, um, rheumatoid arthritis medication can be really effective for reducing disease activity and stop the disease from progressing. And so it's really strongly encouraged in the ongoing management of inflammatory arthritis. So how much do we need? So um, stretching and some of these exercises could be really time consuming, but, to, but you can achieve the most benefits by stretching daily. Or if you can't do daily, then at least two to three times a week, even five to 10 minutes of stretching a day can be helpful. And I always do mine at night while I'm watching tally. It's just easy, five to 10 minutes, put out the yoga mat in front of the tally and do some stretching. Um, they say that 30 hours of stretching is needed before you start to see an improvement. So skipping regular stretching means that you risk losing the potential benefits. For instance, if stretching helped you increase that range of motion, um, your range of motion may decrease again if you stop stretching altogether. And supervision is really important if your balance is poor. So stretch with a friend, stretch with a family member, or in a class with a supervisor. All right, so now we're just, I'm gonna go through quickly um, our online exercise programs available for people with arthritis in Australia. So our Dance for Arthritis, this is a 10 week online exercise program. So this is for people in Queensland and New South Wales with arthritis. And this program specifically focuses on strength, flexibility and balance. And these can, this can all help to decrease arthritis symptoms like joint pain and fatigue. So the Queensland Ballet run these sessions weekly and they're online, online and they're live classes. So you can actually join them from the comfort of your own home as they're run through Zoom, which you know, you're using right now for the webinar. So the dance classes are beginner friendly and arthritis friendly, so there's no prior dance experience required. And our next one is our Arthritis Moves program. So this is a 12-week online exercise program for people all in Australia with arthritis. So anyone in Australia with arthritis can join our Arthritis Moves. So this program is tailored to focus on your problem areas of arthritis and specifically focuses on improving strength and balance. So we have um, university qualified exercise physiologists run these sessions weekly. They're live um, classes that are online, just like Dance for Arthritis. You can join from the comfort of your own home through Zoom. And um, this physical exercise program is designed to help relieve discomfort and get you back um, into a more manageable, manageable day to day life. And then our last one that's available, and um, this is a New South Wales program, it's called our Get Moving series. So it's um, a variety of exercises that are demonstrated and um, recorded for you. So you can read the exercise booklet first and then watch the recorded videos of each exercise to suit the level of intensity you choose. So the four levels of intensity range from beginner to basic to intermediate and then advanced. So it's to cater all levels of fitness and mobility. And it's a great to start it 
beginner and then work your way up to the advanced level. All right, and that is it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brie. That was really informative, especially sharing the information um, 